there's a very important problem that exists in finance, which is to say, how much should a company be worth? That is, what should we pay for a company? The most common way to value a company, for example, to estimate a stock market price or to estimate uh, the fair price of the purchase of a company, the most common way to do it is a discounted to present worth projection of future cash flows. So here's time equals zero. And what we want to know is how much shall we pay for this company? The company has revenues, let's say, and they're expecting those revenues to grow. Unlike the arithmetic example that we showed earlier, where the landlord increased the rent by a constant amount every year, $200 a month in that case, when we talk about how much should we pay for a company mm -hmm. with growing profits, we typically express that growth, not arithmetically, as if it were a straight line, but geometrically. This gets confusing because there are two percentage rates. The first one, the interest rate, is expressed as a percentage per unit time. And this can either be the interest rate or the discount rate. Interest rate if we're moving forward in time, discount rate if we're moving backward in time. They both have the same units of percent per year. But now there's also this little g, which is a growth rate, and that's also expressed in percent per year. In this example, we might be trying to value a new startup company, and the profits are growing at a rate of 10 or 20 percent per year. That means they grow geometrically, not arithmetically. And what we want to know is, if we're expecting these kinds of profits at this kind of growth rate, how would we discount this arithmetic series to a present value that represents what we'd be willing to pay for these expected profits? Instead of A, in which we have a uniform series, like an annuity, Think of each one of these, A1, A2, A3, A4, A5. Think of each one of these as different. They're no longer uniform, but they are regular payments. So we're going to call those A to the N. Each one of them has a different value. And because they grow geometrically, we know that A to the N equals A1 times 1 plus the growth rate raised to the number of compounding periods. It's the same equation that we used to convert, to calculate the exponential growth, sorry, the geometric growth of a bank balance. In our first video, this would have been P, and this would have been F, and this would have been the interest rate. But in this case, it's not the balance, it's the payments, it's the profits that are growing exponentially. So we need a more complicated way to calculate the present worth. One way to do it would be by hand. Treat each one of these as an F, calculating F1, F2, F3, F4, just like we do with A to the N. And in separate terms of a calculation, reduce, discount them all to present value. What would that look like? It would look like P equals a1, 1 plus the discount rate to the n, plus A1, 1 plus g, I said n, but I meant 1, over 1 plus i to the 2. You can see how this one is going to be A2 plus A1, 1 plus g squared over 1 plus i to the 3, on and on until we get to, in this case, 5. And you can see how this is very tedious. Let's not do it this way. As you might have guessed, there is another equation. It's a complicated equation, but it reduces
reduces this geometrically increasing cash flow diagram down to a single present worth. And it looks like this. A1 times the present worth factor, 1 minus the quantity, 1 plus g to the n times 1 plus i to the negative n, all over i minus g. In this special case, you can see that we have a problem when i and g are equal. The entire present worth factor blows up to infinity. That's a discontinuity. It doesn't mean the formula is wrong. It means that at the special case where i equals g, we don't need the formula at all. I'll show you why. 